Welcome to British Skill Modeling. This is part three of the main British Heavy Tank Mark V female, scale 135. In part two, I put the whole hull together, I had the guns and made a start on the traps, just um, putting them together and dry fitting them. In this part, I'm going to be carrying on both the traps, uh, placing them on, and then finishing it all off, uh, putting in the top details and so forth. So let's jump into this. So I've made a section of track here, um, about 10 lengths or so, and uh, just placing them on and drooping them over the idle wheel. Uh, this just uh, gives you the basic shape that you need to go over the wheel. Now you can build these individually on if, if you wish, um, or you can try and build the whole run before placing it on. Personally, I think it's better just uh, doing it in sections. There is 91 separate lengths um, to, to do on each track. If you do not how I do it, it is um, advisable to put a little bit of glue on each contact point as you put in each section. Um, with these lengths, you don't really have to uh, glue them. These are the first lengths that I've used that I've never actually had to glue. Oh, every time I've used links that you just push together and they should click into place, it's never really worked. These are the only ones so far I've managed to get to work. Although they do pop up now and again, uh, which can be frustrating. So a little bit of glue doesn't 100% um, stop it, uh, because you also you don't want to burn up with too much glue. But it certainly prevents most of the, the trap from coming apart. So that's the top section done, and um, you, you can uh, try and get all alignment straight away, but you can wait until it is um, all completed before trying to uh, place it in line. And to close it up, just leave one uh, link um, out uh, like that, then just place it in. Again, it can be a little bit fiddly. Uh, to place it in, uh, you just have to persevere with it, but it should just slot in one end then push down into the other end to complete the track. I'm going back to the paintwork that I started painting in um, part two. Uh, there's a bit of assembly required here, it just gets pushed into a, a bracket. You, you may have to like, um, f not force it, but give it a good push uh, for it to make contact. There's a little hole there that three, it feeds through before it goes onto the main unit. And once that's on, it's um, a simple case of uh, just uh, putting the two halves together. There's a, a little joining um, connection point there to help you do this. It can be fiddly though. But when you do it, you also want to make sure it's completely dry before you move it. So. But, but what I did was I just propped it up some um, against uh, some tweezers uh, to make sure that I've got the um, the, the, the proper height uh, for the joint to rest on so it didn't bow as it was uh, setting. So as you can see that's what I'm doing. Um, I put on the last piece which is a little cylinder plates and I'm just connecting it all back up and I'm using uh, a series of clamps in my tweezers just to make sure it doesn't bow while it sets. So it's time to make up the two beams that go over the top of the tank. And uh, there's a couple of brackets that are getting fed onto before I place them on. In Rebel Aquacolor 91 Steel and Tamiya's XF84 Dark Iron. And once they dry, they just uh, slip on the middle uh, of these beams. There's a couple of location points for them to fit in. There is a left and right hand side to these, so um, just bear that in mind when you put these brackets on and uh, the position you put them on. Look at the instructions, but the brackets should fit inwards towards each other. So the first thing to go on is the uh, steel pipe. The, the thicker part uh, uh, goes on first between the two housing units. There is location points there for you uh, to, to line it up. And then that runs down the side of the tank uh, to the back and there's a, a little point where the, it connects to the back. Next to go on is the two rail beams. Now I would suggest that you place the um, thicker of the ends 
on forest. There, there's a good location point for them to sit on to, and it acts as an excellent anchor point for them to go on. Then ignore the actual brackets on top of the roof before you attach it and attach the other end. Wait for that to dry before then you attach the um, brackets on top of the roof to this actual beam. While those beams are setting, it's time to move on to the guns that run along the sides of the hull. And these are made up exactly the same as the others. So the black piece goes in first, these are little gator things. Then they're sailed off with a um, cap. Again, make be careful when you put these on, they can easily break. break. Next is to build up the actual housing. Uh, it comes with the top and bottom plate. Start with the bottom plate first and um, put in the um, side walls. Um, the, it does run on a curve, but um, if you run it through from the side to the left to the other side, you shouldn't have much problem. I did this one um, the other way. Again, the rivets make it very difficult for it to join up and hold in place. You have to be really careful when you're doing it or you'll end up with a lot of gaps. It took me a couple of goals to get this right. So the inner parts of the guns are not assembled. The, um, the outer walls are just two cut pieces that go together and the gun just uh, pulls through. And that whole unit then goes into the main housing. Now you can have these free moving if you, if you wish. There's um, a lot of location points uh, for them to fit into then they can be free moving i i didn't do that i i secured them in place i just um the model is going to be a static model so I, I didn't want anything moving really on it so next i'm using my photo edge uh, bending tool here this is just to bend up um, a couple of brackets that go on the end of the tank uh, as well as the uh, vents for the um, grill that's on the side. So first of all, just a, a couple of the little brackets going on and they just push on. They're, they're small, but um, with a good pair of tweezers them and a little dab of super glue, you shouldn't have much of a problem. There's a couple of panels, lights I think they are. I'm not sure, they go on top where the flag uh, pole is. And um, these are getting painted in rubber up color 90 silver and to fit them is uh, just a case of a little bit of super glue and um, depending on um, you know, what you want to do is what position you want to put them in. I put them in the downward position just because it was easier. So it was, then it was onto the vents and um, each side has a, a different style. So this one is just like two girders uh, running down in a V formation on the first side. The opposite side is more of conventional um, vent cover, so the, these go down on, on the angle. Um, the, there's two to put on. Now the instructions say uh, assemble them one on top of the other, what I'm doing here. But I noticed they didn't quite fit, so it's better to put one on at a time and uh, they adjust to fit in uh, as you go. So the top one's on. and um, just uh, slightly bending the part to make the second one fit. So next is placing the guns on. Th there is a bottom panel that goes on as well, but it's practically the same as uh, placing the uh, gun ports on, so the, there's no point in showing both. So the um, bottom panel's in, that just butts up against the runner. Um, it's very easy to do, just uh, push it on and that's it. And the same with the gun, slightly off camera there, um, but um, it just fits into the recess without any problem. As always, just check the alignment uh, before uh, you, you're satisfied with both of them. So next is the uh, uh, crib trench uh, crossing uh, planks. This was quite an interesting thing to build, but initially they were painted in Tamil's XS84 dark iron and River 8382 Wood Brown. Um, there's quite a lot of painting process to be gone on here. Um, little bits of paint for the wood, um, dotted here and there, interlined with the bracket. 
I'm using Revlock Core 09 Half Swipe Black, and this is for what they call a hitching beam um, that goes alongside the uh, actual trench uh, device. I, I'm just placing a, a light coat on this because I want a warm look. It does come in two pieces. There's a back panel that um, has to play, be placed on. Take note of the two brackets there. Um, a, a bit of chain will be linked into that. Next I'm using Life Color LPW18 Wood Deck Darkner, darkner. and um, just a little bit of this and all I'm doing is dirtying up the wood and giving it some like a green effect um, to make it more like a used piece of wood. So next is to install these uh, head skin shaped things that hold the beams and it's just two halves that uh, get bonded together. You shouldn't have any problem with it, just make sure it's the right way around, I almost didn't. Um, but it can all really fit in one way, so you'll soon notice if you get it wrong. The length of chain that the kit comes with will have to be cut into various lengths. It does tell you on the instruction sheets uh, the lengths that you need. Um, and it's a simple case of uh, attaching them. You can either use a uh, little uh, hoops and brackets that the kit supplies, but they're so thin and small they generally just break if you try and take them off the sprue. So I I just uh, use place them in and uh, use a bit of super glue to hold them in place. So for the H beam to go on, th this gets placed in between the two brackets that you, you uh, place on the, the beams that run up down the side of the tracks. Um, so a little bit of cement on each beam and uh, the hitching uh, beam goes on across the top. Then just let the chains dangle down a bit before um, you secure them. You want to make sure the beam has 100% dry and can't move. And then once it's dry, just uh, secure the chain uh, onto the two contact points at the edge of uh, the house in here. Um, and it shows you on the structure exactly where they go. Again, a little bit of uh, super glue, then just pull it taut. As you can see, my beam moved, so I didn't have it um, secured um, good enough before doing this. So make sure your beam is absolutely dry before you attempt this, or you will pull the, the unit out. So now it's uh, time to assemble uh, the, this um, crib trench crossing beam thing. And uh, I, I quite enjoyed how this went together. So um, each um, hexagon shape thing, um, just gets pushed in the little uh, location points there that you can see on the beam uh, directly into the recess point there. Uh, they, they fit it in really well. I, I just picked um, one edge and uh, laid all four of them in one place. Then use that as my anchor point, then just carry it on the way around, placing each beam on. And then more length of chain gets fitted in this. Uh, just pick a point. Um, where you'd like it to go and uh, one length um, should go um, all, the, all the way through it. I actually had it in two lengths, I misread the instructions but the uh, should, a single length uh, should be passed through so it's uh, drooping down on each side. Then once it's on um, you just place it on top on, onto the actual rails and it should just sit above the um, driver's cab assembly here with the red flashes and again, like the other beam, make sure it's completely dry before you start dealing with the chains. And then the chain uh, can just be uh, pulled off. There's a couple of anchor bars that the um, chains at the bottom here rest on. The other two parts of the chain, I wasn't sure exactly where they put them. So I just laid them down running along the side of the track. I just took my tweezers, pulled them top and laid them down there. And now all I've left to do is put the decals on. There's only four uh, decals to be on. Um, because of the surface, um, make sure you're using a good decal solution. In this case, I use Microsol uh, for this because this really does um, blend in the decal to the contours of what we're putting on. But beware, it can make the de decal really fragile, so you have to be careful. Well, this will bring this part to a close and indeed the uh, build to a close. This was actually quite a difficult kit to build for me. Um, I would only recommend this from um, intermediate to um, experienced builders. The reason for that is because of the rivet work 
put on the actual hull and uh, the little boxes yeah, that, that you have to make up. It's extremely difficult to get them all to line up. But saying that, it was still an enjoyable kit to build. So uh, don't be put off with it. Um, blend through some of my mistakes. I, I know I made a few of them on this build. So if you have time, why don't you check out the channel um, for the rest of my builds. Subscribe to that channel as, as well for any upcoming updates. Hit that like button and of course you can leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.